The other good question that was asked is, what did you just say in the last 10 minutes? This is very difficult. This is an extremely subtle point, and I'm going to hammer it in over and over again here in sections, all of that. Why is it so important? Because number one, this is a number heritability that the general lay public comes away with interpreting completely wrongly. And number two, the vast majority of scientists, when they're working in this field of behavior genetics, design their experiments so that by definition, they are eliminating all sorts of realms of environmental influences. Okay, so going back to this here. So here we see once again this simple question. Use this one over and over, translating all this theory and variation and stuff. Always translate it into the same question. I can find out what type, what version of this gene, or I can find out which environment this is happening. Which one do I want to know if I want to be in a better position to guess what's going on? And when it looks like this, you don't want to know the genes, you want to know the environment, because it's far more powerful. And if you only studied this in this setting, you would come away saying, oh, this variability is entirely explained by which version of the gene. Oh, this trait, plant IQ, has 100% heritability. And what you see there is when you combine it together with numbers like these, it's 15% heritability. So that's totally critical to hammer in. OK, so what are some of the responses at that point by people who will say that's ridiculous if you're saying what heritability mostly should be teaching us is how unpowerful genes are? What would be one of the initial responses? Great, how many plants out there are growing in both the Amazon and the Gobi Desert? And it's so hard to study IQ and plants. This is a totally artificial dichotomy between the extremes of environment. You're like inflating things now, you're cheating in the other direction to get the most dramatic artificial circumstances to inflate your sense of how important environment is. This is totally artificially dichotomized. So think about humans and think about one single fact, which is we inhabit more different environments than any other species on Earth. We live in the Amazon, and we live in the Gobi Desert, and we live in Peoria, and we live in all these things, and we have more exposure to different sorts of environments. So immediately that argument goes down the drain. OK, so now instead somebody argues something different saying, OK, yeah, yeah, sometimes plants have IQ in the Amazon and in the Gobi Desert. And I get your point, your stupid point here, that ooh, environment can make. No one's going to argue that the difference between the Amazon and the Gobi Desert isn't important. Oh, yeah, OK, well, humans, they live in both. All of that is not an artificial difference. But you notice something? Isn't it interesting that in these two different environments, C, Plants always have the highest IQ, and A plants always have the lowest. That's telling us something about that gene. That's telling us, and you're then saying, well, yes, yes, it differs by environment, but we've just learned something very important about these gene versions, which is in totally different environments, version C gives you a higher plant IQ. So that's important, yeah, yeah, environment, but we've just seen how powerful this gene is. But then you run into the person at the conference who is studying it in the Gobi Desert, and they put their data up. And it's even worse than in the last version, because it looks like this. And what have you just learned? You can't say a thing about this gene. You have just learned the translation of this sentence. The first critical sentence we've had over and over is, if you can only know one factoid, one about which gene version or one environment, choose the environment, we have now just learned a second sentence, a second question to ask, which is, what does having A, B, or C have to do with plant IQ? And if the answer is, it depends, you've just seen the subtlety. If the answer is, it depends on which environment you're looking at. If you're looking in the Amazon, C gets you the best plant IQ. If you're looking in the Gobi Desert, C gets you the worst plant IQ. What have you just shown? What is technically the definition of a gene-environment interaction? 
And we have just seen going from, well, yeah, yeah, they're very different, but C is always the best, isn't that interesting, to a completely different profile. What does A, B, or C have to do with plant IQ? It depends. It depends on the environment. That's how you have just defined, that's your diagnosis for gene-environment interaction. And what ultimately one has to argue is that it is impossible to ever say what a gene does. You can only say what a gene does in the environments which, to date, it has been studied in. Okay, let's see that expanding even more. Because you've got this... Okay, let's jump ahead. Okay, so this is showing you now just how totally nutty and counterintuitive heritability terms actually are. You ask a question, what's the heritability of number of fingers on your hand? Well, you know, genes have to do with the fact that we got five fingers instead of flippers or some such thing. Genes have huge amounts to do with it. You're not asking about the average number of fingers, you're asking about the variability. Remember that again. So what are the circumstances out there which will give somebody six fingers instead of five? That's incredibly rare. What about four fingers instead of five? Oh, industrial accidents. Three fingers instead of five. Lots of industrial accidents. Two, change jobs or whatever. What are we seeing here in terms of how much do genes have to do with having fewer than five fingers it's all industrial accidents. Genes have nothing to do with it. There's no doubt some weirdo disease out there, but for our purposes, this is how it works. What have we just discovered? Number of fingers, that trait has a 0% heritability. That's totally bizarre. That's completely counterintuitive. Genes have everything to do with why the average human has five fingers, but they have nothing to do with the variability. In that case, it's entirely environmental. The number of fingers you have has 0% heritability. Now let's look at another example. It's 1950 in Eisenhower, America. Actually, it wasn't until 1952, but it's a very different world than now, and one of the things that you would never, ever, ever, never, never, ever see in the United States would be some guy wearing an earring. Unless in a very cloistered part of the country, he was a sensitive guy, but for most of America, this is not what men do. They don't wear earrings. And likewise, in most of America, if you were a good, red-blooded American woman, you would not go outside without your earrings are. So now you got to say, okay, well, what causes variability in ear ring wearing behavior? And it's entirely explained by whether you are female or male, which is a genetic trait. What we've just seen is whether or not you wear earrings in 1952 has 100% heritability. Totally counterintuitive. Think through this again and again and again because this makes sense. When heritability is a number about this rather than this, you get a world where 0% heritability for your number of fingers and 100% heritability for whether you were wearing earrings at that time. Because, once again, asking, okay, I've got a choice in the matter. I can either know the entire genome of this individual or I can know whether they are in a frat where they close their eyes and work with a wood saw every now and then. Which fact do I want to know? That's the one that will tell me what about the environment going on with them. Or now you have a choice. I can either know the entire genome of this person or I could know that um, what sort of environment they're living in in 1952. What you want to know there is male or female. If I know that, I can completely predict this behavior of earring wearing. So this totally counterintuitive thing here where heritability is telling just the opposite of what people intuitively think. And as soon as you deal with that and recognize that and recognize the way scientists do experiments is to try to do things as cleanly as possible, study it only in one place, in only one setting, in only one circumstance, you've just artificially guaranteed that you're going to come away more impressed with the genes than they actually deserve to be. So how would this look, beginning now in more detail? 
So what we've got here are a number of different ways in which you can see when are genes important, when are environment important, that sort of thing. Okay, so we have here two different traits. No, we have one trait, two different flavors of the gene, and flavors A and B, and three different environments. So here you have the Amazon, the Gobi Desert, and a roller coaster. And you're measuring plant IQ, and there's two different versions of the gene there. And you're asking, well, what does gene, what do environment have to do with it? Your data look like this. What does it tell you? Environment makes no difference at all. It doesn't matter if you're in the desert, the rainforest, whatever, which version of the gene you have entirely explains the variability. So this is what a heritability of like 100% would look like. Now you do the study, and instead you get data like these. You'll note just one of the most important things about being a card-carrying scientist, which is data are plural which talk about counterintuitive, earrings are genetic and data are plural. So now you get these data and you see as follows. In this environment, no difference depending on what type of gene you have. In this environment, no difference, no difference. In each environment, very different averages. Ah, this is what it would look like with 0% heritability. There's no difference at all of the variation explained by gene variation. It's all environmental. So now we have a version that forces us to put in the same phrase we heard about before. This is what your data look like now. And you now ask the question, well, what does being an environment, what does your environment have to do with your plant IQ? And the answer is, it depends on which version of the gene you have. And now you ask, what does having a certain version of the gene have to do with your plant IQ? And the answer is, it depends on which environment you're in. This is, in a sense, the verbal definition, again, of a gene-environment interaction. What do genes have to do with this trait? Depends on the environment. What does environment have to do with the trait? It depends on the type of genes. This is what the data would look like. 